Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for coming to this project showcase against micro credentials, seeding anti colonial and care filled digital pedagogical otherwises. Who are we? How are we positioning ourselves and our collective, the pedagogy of the digitally oppressed? We are scholars and educators located in India and the indigenous territories currently colonially occupied by Canada and the US. My name is Ashley, my pronouns are she, her, and I come to this work as a queer Filipina British woman living as a settler in the Lenape territory colonially called Philadelphia. Hello everyone, my name is Kush, my pronouns are they or he, and I'm joining you today from Bangalore, India. Hi, my name is Arun. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm joining you all today from Hamilton, Ontario, which is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, the Neutral, the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. Together, we are also the co-founders and co-facilitators of the Pedagogy of the Digitally Oppressed Collective, a collective that fosters queer, feminist and anti-colonial approaches to digital humanities teaching through academic talks, writings, and teaching across a range of peer and community reviewed conferences, platforms, sites, and publications. Pedagogy of the Digitally Oppressed started as a collective practice in Lekwungen territory, colonially called Victoria, BC. Since then, we have been connecting and reconnecting with each other in person and online from various lands, including indigenous lands. And we recognize that many of the digital infrastructures we use are built on indigenous lands and remain inaccessible to many indigenous communities. Our responsibilities to indigenous lands and life must extend into the digital realm as well. In this showcase, we discuss the need of a free, virtual, global, and ongoing digital humanities school committed to anti-colonial digital pedagogy and practice. So what is the school going to say no to? Why is the school needed? Amidst the current plethora of digital humanities schools and workshops, why and how is it unique? The school seeks to challenge and work against the institutional defaults of DH research and teaching, which perpetuate colonialism and border imperialism in digital humanities by centering elite, white, Brahminical, and Western-centric knowledge production within resource-rich infrastructures. The school is also a refusal to reproduce the instrumental functions of tool acquisition and product creation common to DH training towards reconsidering the role of teaching and learning in fostering care-based anti-colonial relationships and organizing work within, beyond, and alongside the academy. The school foregrounds instead, as we have written elsewhere, a relationship-centered pedagogy involving a set of interconnected, overlapping, and continuous spaces for anti-colonial digital humanities organizing and relationship building. Why are we saying no to what we are saying no to? Why say no to micro-credentials? How is the move to micro-credential tied to and perpetuating colonial systems and legacies? In the increasingly global, micro-credential centered and skillification focused approaches to open pedagogy in digital humanities, digital competencies are packaged as key instruments that will instill digital humanities learners with the vocational skills to compete in the capitalist market. These approaches and foci too often neglect to contend with and begin to address the harmful issues embedded within digital infrastructures and technologies, including concerns of surveillance, which most directly impacts those who already experience structural inequities connected to spatial and epistemic violence. Indeed, such approaches perpetuate these very issues. We worry that unbundling post-secondary education vis-a-vis micro-credentialing as a way to capitalist-minded educational attainment dampens solidarities and networks of scholarly care. Unbundling is tailorization by another name which is bringing the factory management systems developed in the 19th century to increase efficiencies by evaluating every step in an automating process, breaking down production, 
including and by extension knowledge production into specialized repetitive tasks, making it easier to surveil and gather more granular data from individuals enrolled in these courses, as well as from institutions and services awarding said credentials. So what are we building instead? What are the school's objectives? What ethical considerations and principles must be at the center of the praxis and process of the school and its creation? What movements have we been shaped by? We wish to foster a transnational and translocal learning environment and collective that is sustainable, nourishing, responsible, and equitable. We take inspiration from various contemporaneous initiatives that seek to build more just infrastructures of digital learning practices. We also find ourselves thinking with longer histories of collective educational organizing that led to the formation of teach-ins, crowdsourced anti-oppression reading lists, and mutual aid networks for community healing. The writings of Bell Hooks and Audre Lorde are instructive in this proposition, as are the origins of the teach-in as a form of anti-Vietnam War protest in Ann Arbor, reading lists on anti-racism, anti-casteism, intersectional feminism, and decolonizing pedagogy, and more survival-centered, anti-carcerally accountable and place-based resource sharing led by disabled, Black and Indigenous, Global South, and queer and trans communities. Our goal is to bring together folks working on digital pedagogy from an array of geographic and disciplinary locations, including outside of post-secondary institutions, who are committed to the process of developing this school together. Towards this objective, we are continuously asking and reflecting on what will be necessary to fund and to forward this school, its work, its objectives, and its community members in ethical and care-filled ways, including infrastructural design and topical content. How can we stay connected? We look forward to furthering this dialogue with you at the Project Showcase. And we hope you will join us to learn the latest developments and dreamings about the school at this year's virtual component of the Haystack Gathering as well. We have also provided our contact information on the screen. Thank you.